This programme is an Orange Bag Media production. Everybody and welcome to Northamptonshire in the centre of England. This weekend we're racing close to one of the oldest continuously inhabited settlements in the UK. Coaster has a rich racing heritage too. But back in 1896 when the first competition took place, it was on four legs rather than four wheels. Since 1948, the best in the world have gathered at the local Silverstone circuit. The street names around the town honour Formula One drivers. It's early March and the home of the British Formula One Grand Prix is once again playing host to the Preventic 24-hour Endurance Series. We are at the legendary circuit of Silverstone. Oh, this is already the third time for us that we are here. Um, yeah, when it's a great circuit, when there are a lot of cars, then we will come back, of course. The series is back and so are last year's championship winning team. They have returned with the car that brought them that victory. This is the championship car from last year, so um, you know we're defending teams and uh, drivers' champions overall. Um, we've got the new car, the new FK8 is coming, that's now at Geneva Motor Show. Um, so we've brought the, uh, the championship winning car back for one last race. The race is a full 24 hours. So driving here is not just a sprint race. Yeah, you need to think of, we need to finish the 24 hours. In a sprint race, you, you go like crazy. So because it's 30 minutes, you need to make most out of it. Right in the beginning, where here we, we let the race come to us. You need to think, think before you act here. So, but it's it's totally different, but it's good fun. There's a new driver in the Red Camel Jordan.nl team, and Konstantin Kalko will be qualifying the car. I had to do the uh, whole qualifying, and uh, I managed to bring the car to fifth position which is really interesting. I was just one second um, behind the leader and this is my first time in front wheel drive like that. It was good. The car is really good this weekend. We found a good setup. So it was okay and uh, we're third on the grid. We could be higher, but not uh, not so good lap in qualifying. We, can't, we got caught out with some oil that was put down in the session and uh, it meant that when we put our lap down, the track wasn't quite as good. We were only narrowly pipped to pole position by Sebastian Blicamo and he put in a really good lap. Yeah, we had a really good qualification. Uh, a gap of three tenths to Rory Butcher, which is uh, also a good driver. So yeah, well, I think the setup for the race is quite good. Uh, we had a good qualifying and uh, well, the problem is the weather, of course. It's always the weather at Silverstone, but if we manage to stay on track, uh, I think we can end up high. This race will go through the night, so all drivers must do the night practice, as racing in the dark is different from racing in the daytime. Night quality was pretty tough. The, uh, the track conditions at the end of the night were, were pretty bad. I'm not sure whether there was an incident in the prototypes that then wasn't cleaned up or... Uh, but anyway, there was gravel everywhere, mist and spray. But Matt managed to put a, an amazing lap in. I think we were fifth overall at the end of night quality. So, uh, no, we're happy. We're, uh, we're making a tyre choice now and we'll see how the race goes. Team's expectations not solely based on the car or their competitors. It's going to be wet. It's going to be big fun. There's going to be a lot of cars off track. And after 24 hours, we probably think we have driven for 48 hours. And uh, the guy who uh, has been on the tarmac for the longest time will probably win. And anybody who is outside the tarmac will have to try again and uh, come up front. It's going to be difficult. We're going for the glass win. Uh, car is on pole with uh, Michael Schrei and, um, and the steering wheel, our fastest guy. Um, yeah, we, we expect to be, uh, we, we try to, to finish at the podium. This is likely to be a hard race, as we've already seen 
because this is not the first competition this weekend. This is not the start of the weekend. We already had five hours of racing yesterday uh, with the 12 hours of Silverstone. You can see the start grid behind me at the moment. There are also a lot of cars over there. Yesterday already drove five hours and today they are going to race for the remaining seven hours. So the 24-hour touring car endurance race for the first seven hours will also include the GT and prototypes. It's going to be tough. TCR cars are obviously quick. You know, without the GTs in the second half, should be uh, should be a little bit better. We're just hoping they're able to dry the track up quickly for us, and then uh, we can get on without racing. The touring car endurance race pole sitter has worked out a way to avoid being caught up in the GT and prototype battles at the start. I think we're going to um, make a gap before the start because you never know what, what the GT3s are, are doing in front of us. But you know, it, will be, it will be challenging, uh, especially in these conditions. But, but let's see, what, what, maybe it stays dry or maybe it, it starts raining uh, during the start. We don't, we don't know yet. It's, uh, all the, 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 the weather reports uh, tell different stories. Anyway, we need to deal with it, so let's see where we end up. Touring cars and GT Series competitors have raced together before. Adding in the prototypes is a new dimension, as explained by the race director. Uh, it, it's going to be difficult. Uh, I, asked, I asked all the teams to be careful because some of the cars weigh 600 kilos and other cars weigh one and a half ton. So I asked them in the briefing, please, please take care of each other and, uh, and mind each other. Um, and it be extra difficult because of the weather conditions. It's uh, very slippery in some places. But I have high expectations of this race. If this works, it's going to be great, yeah. The TCE drivers are convinced that racing with the prototypes will be enjoyable, although they've no experience of it just yet. Uh, they're, they're black, they're the same color as the tarmac, and they're uh, low and they're much faster than us. So uh, we have to look in our mirrors uh, and see them come flashing by. Uh, we don't know. Yeah, we're used to driving with the A6 Pros, uh, but with Pro Protos, that's a new thing. No, it's not, it's not, not, not a huge problem because we're used to that uh, from Dubai. A lot of GT cars and Solder last year with drove Solder. Also with Proto cars, you have to watch out a bit and that's it. Two warm-up laps completed and the field is ready for the green flag. True to his word, Sebastian Blake Morland creates a gap to the prototype and GT cars ahead of him. Touring cars come around the final corner. The light is out and the field can start racing. Sebastian's decision to create a gap was a good call. Already at the first corner, the TCE's knocking on the door of the trailing GT cars. Rory Butcher takes the opportunity to lead. Got off the start and it was very wet um, at the beginning. And uh, yeah, managed to pass Sebastian down into Maggots Beckett's and, and also clear a couple of Porsches as well. And that, that, that make, made sure that I had a little gap. And I just kind of stretched my legs and got into a rhythm and, and managed to pull a gap throughout the, the race. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, the car was working really well. So the guys have done a good job, yeah. Even this early in the race, drivers are protecting their positions. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult. But for the overtake, you must win the overtake. I don't lose the, the place too easy. I'm up to, to stay on the track. Sometimes it's really sleepy. But uh, maybe uh, this is the race. The race under weight condition is not, uh, uh, this is sometimes the good uh, figure. <laughs> a happy Red Camel crew, they've gained a position on the damp track. I had to start with the uh, slick tires on the wet track, which was a really big fight because I couldn't warm the tires like for seven or eight laps in the beginning. And um, after that, I just found out the pace and I found down the uh, dry line so I could go uh, quicker and uh, I think I was the quickest on the track and I had a lot of fights and it was really, really interesting. Touring cars sharing the track with the GTs and the prototypes but still fighting together over the same bit of tarmac on this nearly six kilometre long British circuit. Conditions partly wet, partly dry so deciding which tyres to race on is a tough decision. Uh, so at the start of the race, we took a bit of a gamble and we went with slicks when a lot of the field went with wets. Um, started to come into play and we started gaining time on those in our class that did have wets on, but then it rained again. We had the good old British weather and the rain came out of nowhere and uh, we saw our lap times drop a little bit. So uh, as soon as we finished our first stint, we, we, uh, we st stuck with the slicks, but I think the rest of the field moved to slicks as well and we uh, them competing a bit more. The start was okay. And uh, for maybe 
one hour, one hour and a half, it was good. But then the track dried. So for, for the fuel, it's not good too, because we use more fuel. And then uh, it was okay. The car is okay, uh, okay to drive, but we're not good in the classification. The number 136 Volkswagen Golf for French team motorsport development in the pits. Ah, the car is uh, it's okay, and, uh, and uh, well, uh, the, the big warning on the on the dash say uh, the high temperature of the gearbox and smell a little bit of uh, oil, and uh, I decide to uh, to come in in the pit about uh, 115 minutes. Now we looking for the uh, where's the, the 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 problem? I think uh, there are the. A little bit, bit rock is uh, broken on, on the gearbox. We don't know really exactly. And the mechanics uh, work hard to find uh, the problem. I hope, uh, I, sorry, I hope uh, we can go to, to start. The 303 Seat, not yet down to the times they had expected to see. Uh, we well, decided to get, to get out the first on, uh, on slick tires, the first of all, I, uh, I think. Uh, it was very difficult in the beginning, and the times were um, uh, same as the, the guys on, uh, on uh, rain tires. Later on, it started to get better, only the back was very, very light, and uh, we kept on struggling all, through whole stint. Cold temperatures and changeable weather conditions will dictate the pace of this race. It's one of the things the teams really keep an eye on if they want to win. Another thing to keep on top of is how much fuel you've got in your car. Yeah, we run your out of fuel, so... <laughs> That's disappointing, but <laughs> we can't do anything else. That's not the race I would, but I can't do anything. Fast racing on track, perhaps a little too fast. The 303 set in the hands of Evo Broikers, needing a little more tarmac than the track limits provide. Volkswagen 136 back out on track after 20 minutes of repairs. It will be back in after a few more laps. The team deciding not to run after their gearbox broke. <laughs> yeah, we, we are here for, for the win. Eh? For all the team, for sure. But uh, we come back to Imola with uh, the more intention to win, and we win in Imola, I think. <laughs> TCEs, GTs, and prototypes all on the track together. Let's take a look at the standings of the Touring Car Endurance Series. After three hours of racing, the Red Camel Jordan Seat number 303 leads by a lap. NKPP Racing by Baz Kooten, the number 175 Cooper is second. The Seat number 100 from Tim Blakemall and qualified on pole runs third now overall. In TCR, the Finnish team LMS is on the same lap as second and third. English team Accelerate have their Audi in fifth position. And the Danes from Holmgaard Racing with their number 102 Volkswagen in sixth place. Seventh overall, first in the A3 class. Hoffer Racing powered by Bonk Motorsport number 131 BMW. Duo Racing, second in class in their BMW 235. Synchro Motorsport, the number 76 Honda in third position. This is Endurance. Endurance racing is really long and you know, it's 24 hours. You've got to keep telling yourself that. And you know, there are always going to be ups and downs and you know, small offs, or small this, but end of the day, I think the key word, one word if you have to tell anyone is to be consistent. You know, make sure you do your, your part well and have fun in the end. When Kravendik, the organisers of the 24-hour series championship select venues, they like to go to circuits that are loved by the drivers. Yes, this is the circuit of Silverstone, and when you say Silverstone, then Silverstone is motorsport, with a lot of spectators, a lot of people that love motorsport, and of course they will come to the circuit. Yeah, it's, it, it has it all. I think uh, slow corners, fast corners, it's pretty uh, much uh, the greatest track I've ever driven. It's really nice. Like I drove here for the first time, I think, 20 years ago, and every time we, we come back here, I, I still like it. Uh, so. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a cool track, as we turn one, uh, cops, and then backets, backets, uh, fantastic corners. And you need to take a lot of risk um, to, to, to get a good lap time, but yeah, it's nice. Uh, this track is really, really nice in the dry uh, condition. In the wet, it's more difficult. And uh, the new Seat is wonderful to drive. Not currently out on track, the Synchro Honda. We had a bit of an issue, uh, we were noticing that the engine coolant temperature was rising 
Um, so we brought him in and we had a quick look and uh, ascertained it was actually a leak in one of the hoses uh, from the coolant. Took it out and replaced the hose and also we've been monitoring it since and uh, we got the engine temperature and engine coolant temperature back under control. The Red Camel Jordan 303 Seat has over a lap lead on the rest of the field. They find out the track is wetter than they expected. We had a comfortable lead uh, until um, the three laps before he was supposed to come in and uh, I spun and I was stuck in the grass. Uh, the back was uh, wanted to go uh, faster than the front, so then, uh, then the other way uh, is uh, facing the other direction. And then I was in the gravel and then they pulled me out. And uh, I didn't want to leave all the gravel and dirt on the track, so I tried to get rid of it. And still the, 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 the backside was still very wet and uh, no grip at all. And uh, it was, for, I think, also cold. And then I spun again. In order to clean the gravel from the track, code 60 was required. But in that slow running, an engine problem for the Mini 134 of Accelerate. We think it's something to do with the pit limiter. The settings in the ECU when it's on the pit limiter and also the code 60 limiter seem to be damaging the engine. So we think there's been an issue caused by that. So it's just a change in the mapping, but unfortunately it's costless an engine so far. Remarkably, the car was back on track in just under five hours after the team fitted a new engine. A message from race control, start numbers need to be clean and visible. Holgaard Motorsport quick to respond and you can notice the difference straight away. Another car in the pits, the Kawasaki Cupra, but not to clean their number. We had a broken radiator, so we had to replace it. Uh, we lost about 10-15 minutes there. It might be um, a high curb that uh, the driver went over, or it was maybe a failure in the radiator. We couldn't tell what, what was the exact cause. It's one of the two that cost us uh, six, seven laps. And it's really hard to gain these places back, unfortunately. But uh, we keep going strong, stay out of the gravel bed. The start of the 24-hour touring car endurance series powered by Hankook here at Silverstone also incorporated the last seven hours of the Hankook 12 hours of Silverstone for GT and prototype cars. Although out on the circuit at the same time, each of the series were racing with and scoring points for their own categories. As the seven hours is now up, the orange flag is out and it's the end of the race for the prototype and GT competitors. But there's still 17 hours of racing ahead for the touring cars. A good time for us to pause and look at the standings. The Red Camel Jordan 303 Seat is still the overall leader, but has just 12 seconds over the pole sitting number 100 of Team Blinkenmolen in second. Two laps down on the leading pair, the 129 LMS racing by Baz Kooten. The top three are all Seats and the first non-TCR car in sixth place. In A3, the Hoffer Racing powered by Bonk Motorsport number 121 BMW leads the class in second, the Duo Racing number 235 and in third, the 999 BMW of PDM Motorsport. But as we look again at the TCR class, apart from the top two, no other car is on the same lap as one of its direct competitors. This is just the start of the race. In the past, the Creventic event team have based themselves in offices at each of the circuits that we have raced on. But for this year, they have looked for a more accessible location in which to welcome their teams, partners and guests. From this season, we have a new tent, we call it like a warm welcome tent. It's in the middle of the paddock, so it's very central on the paddock. Every team can see us and can reach us. Um, we use it also for the race administration. So when they do the administrative checks, they just can come in here at the middle of the paddock. Of course, here in Silverstone, where it's now a little bit cold, um, it's very useful for the teams, the drivers to come in, to warm up a little bit, to get warm hands. But not only that, also for warm cup of coffee. It's a tent for, for partners, for sponsors, for drivers, for teams, just to come in, have a seat, have a cup of coffee, chat, uh, watch the race on the TV screens. So it's a little bit to relax. This new initiative is not just limited to Silverstone. Now it's not only for Silverstone, we want to have this actually every race. Um, what normally the, all the other races will be a lot warmer, but nevertheless it's still a place to socialize, uh, to drink a cup of coffee, maybe then to drink something uh, fresh. Um, now it's not only for Silverstone, it's for all the races. At the seven hour mark there was 12 seconds between the 303 and 100 for first and second. That gap has come down right on the tail of the Red Camel team. The white blink and Morland number 100 is beginning to challenge and it's clear the 303 Seat will not be able to hold on to the lead right in front of the international grandstand 
the 100 Seat takes the lead of the Hancock 24 hours of Silverstone. The number 30 car is out of the race. The last lap we broke our drive shaft and uh, we didn't have the spare parts to, uh, to, to, to do it. And that's why we have to retire the car for, for now. In the 24 hour series, it's quite usual for the teams to help each other out. But for Team Hyundai Denmark, this isn't an option. No, it's the uh, first endurance uh, car which uh, Hyundai has uh, been building uh, for us, for, for Søren and Jan. And we uh, are looking very much forward to, to, to drive it. And it uh, went very fast. Uh, we could see that. And, uh, but, uh, well, yeah. Unfortunately, we have to retire and looking forward to, uh, to the next race. Close call for the 106 Audi. I just uh, had a, uh, was entering into Stove Corner and uh, I locked up and then I went straight on. Uh, luckily, I, I passed the gravel and stopped before the tyres and then found a small road and, and eventually cut through the grass and came out. But uh, yeah, I'm lucky I was very close to the wall and also not getting, uh, also not binning it. No such luck for Harry Hilders in the 175 Cupra. He uh, slipped into the gravel bed, um, he couldn't get out of it himself, so he had to be towed by a tow truck. And uh, we lost about 10 minutes there and we had to call uh, the car in, uh, into the pit box to get everything fixed because we had some damage to the bottom of the car. As conditions deteriorate, it's getting harder to keep the front end of the cars pointing in the right direction. I just went one meter off the line, they were talking to me and I, I turned in and then I saw that it was not on the, on the dry line, so I, so I spun. And uh, I have problems heating up my rear tyres. Maybe you have to take out one stabulator or something like that. Uh, it's a battle of the fittest and uh, it's like a, like a survival. This is really the most difficult conditions I have ever had. I much rather would like to have full rain. It is much more fun and, 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 and more like balance. Then you don't have to look at the dry line because everything is wet. Uh, this is difficult, so uh, we're going to see how this is going to end, but uh, a lot of respect for all the drivers out there. I think that the heat of the tyres are trying to fight the moisture going onto the track, so there's literally one single track, and if you put one wheel off that or go half a metre wide, then you're going to go into the, uh, into the grass. So very tough, very demanding, and uh, I loved it. Any driver that even goes slightly off the dry line is in big trouble. One after another get into spins and need to be towed out again. This creates a couple of Code 60 situations. And the effect of all this, the pits are occupied with cars that need to get a bit of a boost to get back on track. Good to see though that regardless of how dirty the car is, the start numbers are impeccably clean. Yeah, the organisation has asked us to clean the number on the car, uh, which is fitted on the side of the, uh, the doors. Uh, so all the masters around the track can, uh, can actually see the, the start numbers, which is really important for them. As cars are pushed in, the Accelerate Mini is finally pushed out with a new engine, but it's not out for long. The, the new driver had got in and in the slippery conditions just uh, had a bit of an off and ended up stuck in the grass. So at the moment we're just pulling it out and clearing out. As you can see, there's a lot of mud in the car, so just letting the mud cleared out. Another issue drivers have to deal with, lights on the car. I have more light on my bicycle than on my uh, on my car. Uh, this is really really tough, and um, it's, it's getting to start darker. And I couldn't see the, the the dry line. And if you come off the the dry line, you have to be so 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 careful. It, this this is one of the difficult conditions that I ever had. I must say. The triple nine comes into the pits for a tyre change, but the team has got a surprise. At the last uh, pit stop, we had a driver change and we changed the, uh, the wheels uh, and we had a broken wheel bolt. So uh, the driver went out, uh, we decided to let him go because we have uh, all uh, four bolts in the car. I have five in total, but with four it's possible to drive. And we decided to uh, discuss a little bit what we will do. But uh, 14 hours driving with four, uh, four wheel bolts is a bit uh, risky. So uh, in uh, about uh, in, uh, seven uh, minutes we changed the uh, billboard and so we can uh, drive safe for the rest of the 24 hours, we hope. Regardless of any problems and the weather conditions, it's still an enjoyable race, especially if you're the race leader. I raced with Bleak Molen last year and uh, we were lucky enough to win it last year. So we're all back here with the same team defending our title. 
What I really like about the TCR part of Creventic is that um, you have a chance for an overall win. And I've done the Brit car 24 hours here many years. And to come here and be right at the front and be fighting for the win is really exciting. 11 hours down, let's have a look at the standings. The number 100, Seat Leon of Team Blake and Morland have a full lap lead over their Dutch countryman from Red Camel, Jordans.nl. Three laps further back, the LMS racing by Baz Coot and Seat LCR. Fourth overall, and also in the TCR class, the Holmgard Motorsport Volkswagen 102. They have a five lap lead over the 175 NKPP Cooper TCR from Holland. And a further lap back, the Accelerate Audi number 106. The Hoffer Racing number 131 is up to fifth position overall, first in A3, second in that class the Duo Racing number 235, third the Synchro Motorsport 76 Honda. This is Endurance. This is Endurance. <laughs> this is Endurance. You switch on your lights, then it, beca it became dark. And there's a feeling in you, in the 24-hour racing feeling. That's something special. Only in 24-hour race. The majority of teams and drivers in the Hankook 24 Hours of Silverstone are returning to the Creventic organized series. But there's also a part of the entry for whom this is all a brand new experience. Well, uh, it's a wonderful feeling. This is my first time doing the 24 hours and you know, I wanted to, to get this experience. Uh, we have a wonderful team here uh, and I've raced with uh, Sandy earlier and uh, you know, I just wanted to come here and get an experience of what it feels like to do a 24 hours and also get some nights in practice. Uh, but yeah, uh, you know, I'm very happy to be here. The event is very well conducted and you know, I'd like to thank all the marshals and all the Silverstone staff for helping us. Actually, I found out that the teams here are really professional and uh, I really enjoy competing here and uh, it's a lot of fun. And that all has to do with how the organisers put these events together. We love Creventic um, because we think um, all these 24 hours and 12 hour races um, is easier uh, financially because you have more drivers on the car, it's easier to uh, afford it. Um, so we like to race all over the world. Track conditions are still difficult. It's a challenge to avoid the wet patches and stay on the racing line. The JW Bird 221 has stalled in the middle of the track. Kieran Griffin manages to restart the Volkswagen and continue to race. Dan Wheeler, however, needs outside assistance to get the 76 Synchro Honda back on track, as well as a clean-up of the car by his pit crew. But good news, it's a 24-hour race. So if you make a mistake, you can make up for it later on. We had a bad start. It was my choice to start on slicks. Uh, we should have started on rain tyres, but we tried on slicks to see if we could gamble a little bit. Uh, but that was the wrong choice. So um, the first four hours were not good, but now we are back on the track. We are number four and we are heading for number three. The 134 has been off track. So Setso Wing Sung Ivan brings the car to the pits. Because it's the first time in the Mini, uh, I think the Mini, the tails comes out pretty quick as, as unexpected. Maybe the tyres, maybe the Mini, because I usually drive the TCR Honda, maybe the tyres is much wider or the car characteristics is not the same. So, But next time, same, same time, I will come back for this Mini. That is certainly someone who's grown a liking for his car. Everyone pushing to the max. But if you don't ease off the car a little bit before the pit stop, that means your crew has to deal with red-hot brake discs. Even the rear brake discs were red, as if they were really hot. We try to ask, the, we always ask the driver uh, to try to keep the brakes some cooler for the last three corners before he comes in for the brake change. But not all drivers do what we ask, and then they come in full braking, and then we have to change the brakes whilst they are really, really hot. And red steel is around 800 degrees. So the mechanics need to take the 800 degrees discs from the car. So how do the mechanics change brake discs at such high temperatures? 
It's the uh, of course, we use some special gloves and uh, from the NASA, as it's it's uh, resistant for the for the high temperature. It's 10:30 in the evening. We are halfway. We have 12 hours done. That means we have still 12 hours to go. We have a very nice battle uh, at the top in the TCR class. As you see, the cars are now driving in the dark. Uh, that makes it a little bit difficult uh, for them, I think. Uh, but there's not that many light at the track. But yeah, it's racing in the night. It's a uh, 24 hours racing, so it's part of the job. At the front, the Seat 100 from Blake and Morland and the 303 Red Camel continue to battle. It's exciting. Uh, I think both cars have a good lineup, so uh, we are both pushing, and uh, it, it, it gives us a great battle on track. They seem to have a bit more top speed. And uh, they have, of course, a sequential gearbox, which, which gives them a better lap time normally. But uh, we are pushing, and I think we can keep up with them. We are even faster most of the time. So, uh, yeah, the cars are not identical, but we can still fight. And now we're even leading the race, so uh, we are happy. The weather intervenes again. Fog drifting over the circuit. For sure, there is only uh, one dry line. And now when the fog comes down, it brings some moisture to the track, so it's really tricky. The cars are fighting it out for the race positions and for championship points. If you want to take home the big trophy at the end of the year in Spa, you really need to stay out of the pits for as long as you can. That's something that Sandy Mitchell hasn't managed to do. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what's the cause of it, but uh, I was just going round and then I changed up to fourth gear coming out of the last corner and then I just seemed to have no power. Uh, so we came in and changed the throttle sensor and did a couple more laps, but it just had the same problem in the end. So the boys are changing something to do with the throttle. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get back out there soon. More technical issues for the 76 Honda of Synchro Motorsport. Not the first time the car's been in for this problem. We've been having trouble with the uh, engine generally overheating um, and uh, basically the engine let go. Um, the temperatures were going too high. On, our, on the data from the television screen. Um, so, so yeah, the, uh, out, on, out on track, I, um, there's quite a bit of black, white smoke. Um, so, so, yeah, the, the dr driver said uh, the, the, the engine's going. So, yeah, that's basically what, what, what we're doing, an engine change, really. The 134 is back on the track after a long repair and immediately battling for position. We went out again around 1 p.m. Um, and the cars run like clockwork since, really ran really, really well. Uh, on the slicks as well, which was good. A few people went to 50-50 with slicks on the, uh, wets on the rear. Um, and yeah, really strong pace. Despite the fog, it's still a fun race. Well, the fog is, it was uh, early in the evening a bit, uh, a bit worse. Now it's in two, three corners, um, there's still fog, but it's, it's okay, it's uh, all right. The track conditions are extremely difficult though. There's, um, it's very slippery, there's only it's like a train rail, which is uh, which which is fine, but once you go off the track, it's it's uh, or off the line, and it's terrible, very difficult. And it's made even harder with the battle for the lead now only seconds apart. Yeah, it's it's you know it's it's a zero mistake game that's going on at the moment. One mistake is uh, yeah, it can have no, well not fatal, but uh, will cause a lot of time. Um, so yeah, it's keeping up the accelerator and uh, and focused, stay focused. Another code 60 as Harry Hilders has missed his reference point in the fog, got just a little bit off the dry line and spun the 175 Seat off the track. The exceptional weather conditions has required an exceptional decision from race control. At uh, 2 o'clock we got some complaints from drivers that the visibility was getting worse on the track. So we went out for a couple of inspection laps and the fog went on stronger and stronger. So we decided at 2.15 uh, to stop the race with the red flag. Decision supported by all of the drivers. It was really hard to see um, any marshals, any flags, um, also the track um, limits and so on, the curbs. It was just a bad view and so it was absolutely the right decision to interrupt the race. Continuing the race under code 60 was not an option. Even code 60 was challenging to be honest because you're not going as quick. It was really hard to judge where you needed to turn in, where the exits were. So you could, couldn't pick out the, um, the distance markers going into a corner until they, you were on top of them. And you couldn't see to the apex and then you couldn't see to the uh, exit from there. So really difficult conditions and I think it was probably the right decision to suspend the race. Originally set for an hour, the red flag continued as conditions worsened. The race would not restart 
until daylight returned. Here are the overnight standings. The 303 Red Camel Jordan Dot and El Seat are now back in the lead and two laps ahead of last year's winner of the Hankook 24 Hours of Silverstone. The number 100 Seat have taken Blake and Mullen. A further two laps back in third, the LMS Racing number 129. Hongard Motorsport Volkswagen 102 is in fourth position. They have seven laps over the NKPP 175 who was pulled out of the gravel earlier. Their sister car, the Kawasaki Racing number 155, is in sixth. In A3, the Hofer 131 still holds on to fifth overall and first in class. Duo Racing 235 now three laps behind in second. And with 281 laps completed, the PDM Motorsport 999 completes the top three. 6.15 in the morning and race control have made a decision about restarting the race. We just uh, decided to go around again on the track to do some inspection rounds. The fog has been uh, very improved, so less fog. We decided to restart the, the uh, race at 6.45, whereby the teams can uh, warm up their engine at 6.30. That gives us a chance to ask drivers about the situation last night. Uh, when I was out, uh, it was only Vail that was quite foggy and I know the Hoffa uh, had, had some issues that area and the fog was very difficult and very tough there. When Matt went out then, uh, it was the whole circuit was like it and he said, you know, there's, there's nowhere the decision but to stop it. The yeah, fog was crazy. I was, go I was going to the race director because it was too dangerous to drive there and then they stopped the race with a red flag and I think it was good choice. Not all drivers thought it was their responsibility to inform the race director. Uh, we decided not to go up there. We were leading the, the race. We were in front. And if you're going up there, leading in front, asking to stop the race, that's very obvious that you want to keep the, the pace. And I was trusting, and I saw some people going up there, like uh, the Kute Racing and, and maybe also Blake and Molo went up with our head and to ask to, uh, to find a solution. And uh, finally, it was a wise decision to do that. For some, the red flag was a bit of a gift. He knocked on my door and said, we're taking a break for, for four hours. I was quite happy because I got to stay in my bed. So, <laughs> yeah, it was a good, you know, I did a stint around about midnight and it was very foggy and dark. And I believe they made the right decision to postpone the race because, yeah, when you're going around at racing speed, you, know, you only have a racing line that is dry and the rest of the track is damp. And you can't see, you know, 10 feet ahead of yourself. It's, it's dangerous and uh, it was better to wait until sunrise so we could you know, be safe and enjoy the rest of the race. So The field is behind the safety car and are warming their tyres. Behind the wheel, most of the drivers who were out when the red flag was shown. I was doing my stint at that point uh, quite far into it so I don't think uh, I'll be driving for too long if it restarts just now. Uh, so yeah, just grab, I've slept pretty well between then and now so uh, yeah, feeling fine and looking forward to getting on with it again. During the warm-up laps, parts of the circuit have once again become blanketed in fog. The visibility is worse than during the inspection lap half an hour ago. At that time, the idea that any fog that was still there would have burned off and allowed us to go back to green flag racing. Sadly, the opposite has proved to be true. There's no other choice than to restart the race under code 60. The race leader, the number 303 Seat of Red Camel Jordan NL, is the first to come into the pit lane during the code 60 and change tyres. We were on slicks. It was uh, far too uh, too cold to uh, to make good lap time slicks, so we decided to come in in the code 60 to uh, change to uh, to wet tyres. Uh, I was the one out there, and uh, the team made a perfect decision. They weren't unique in the tactic. Most teams choosing to do the same thing. It was really slippery. We had slick tires on the car from last night. And um, yeah, this morning um, we took the decision to change on wet tires directly because the temperatures were still too cold. You didn't get the t uh, temperatures into the tires. And um, yeah, then we had the Code 60 all time long. Um, uh, I was wondering myself why, because the view was not that bad last, uh, like uh, last night. The marshals have reported they can't see the next marshal post along, so it's not safe to go back to green flag racing yet. But you just have to adapt as a driver and, and the, the, the race control believed it was safer to run it under a code 60. And um, so that, that was the best option. It was safer because it was still quite foggy and the visibility wasn't the, great, the greatest. So. The race director and circuit director checking the conditions at regular intervals and eventually conclude that the fog is cleared enough that the race could resume safely. 
One final piece of housekeeping, the removal of a cone used as a marker point in the night, now in an unsafe position next to the track. The course car returns to the pit lane, the green flag is shown and we're back to racing. Yeah, in the end, after almost one hour, they started the race under normal, normal conditions. And then we uh, did a quick driver change because we had some drivers um, who didn't have their minimum times. And so we did the driver change again. The main focus of this championship is the amateur or gentleman drivers. And the regulations have a minimum driver time to ensure they have a proper stake in the final result. After a night spent parked on the grid and a long code 60, the first thing the drivers need to do is get their hand-cooked tyres up to temperature. I had no temperature in the tyres whatsoever. And uh, it really, it was just about trying to be as aggressive as possible to, to try and induce some temperature. And in doing that, it was a, a lot of fun because the car was sliding around everywhere and uh, yeah, it was great. Uh, yeah, as soon as as soon as the we went racing about two three laps into it, you know, the, I was getting to get, getting some heat into the tires and getting some decent times, and then we had some problem with the car where it was not uh, accelerating fully. It was uh, it was accelerating but very slowly and not uh, very like it was going number by number by number. So it was not ideal and that's why I had to come in and get it checked. Even in this cold morning in March, it's heartwarming to hear from all over the paddock the enjoyment the drivers had in their early morning stint. It was fantastic, it was great because it was a makeup for tonight with uh, all the fog and uh, the narrow dry line and uh, slippery uh, conditions. Uh, for us as a first time drive here in Silverstone, it was fantastic to have an uh, open road now, uh, just go around uh, how we, we want to drive it, it's uh, fantastic. Yeah, it's great. You know, Silverstone's always a, a special place to drive. Uh, you know, it's uh, l last night especially wasn't wasn't the most enjoyable, I, I would say, uh, with the fog and, and the mud. But uh, you know, it's great driving here, and uh, especially in a 24-hour race. And uh, so, yeah, no, we've uh, we've enjoyed it so far. Here's a last look at the intermediate standings as we've just two hours to go. Time is running out for Team Blake and Morland in the 100 Seat if they're going to defend last year's victory in the Silverstone 24 hours. They're two laps down on the current leader, the 303 of Red Camel. In third, the LMS Racing Seat, just now one lap behind second position. Puffer Racing, powered by Bonk Motorsport, hold the cards in the A3 class. They've got three laps between themselves and second place duo racing. PDM still in third with the 999 BMW Z3M. In the TCR class, the closest battles for positions are in the top three. Further down the field, there are bigger gaps. That means any improvement, you'll be relying on problems for your competitors. But with endurance racing, anything is possible. This is endurance. You have uh, this mind game going on in your head. Uh, during the night, you're always asking yourself, what am I doing here? Why am I driving here? I want to be home with my kids, with my wife. And during the day, if you see well and you, you have your reference points and you can control the car, you've, you, you've got the power. And that's, uh, that's a nice thing. That, that's racing. It's, uh, the mind game for me is the difference between a sprint race and endurance racing. Early March in central England and cold temperatures weren't too unexpected. Tire warmers have been used up and down the paddock. Normally in our series it's not allowed to use such uh, equipment like this. But here at Silverstone in uh, March and with the forecast we had when we had to make the decision, the forecast was that it was very cold. And because of the safety we allowed the teams to use tire heaters. With the cold weather the tire warmers were essential for safe racing. Normally you go on ice with skates, you have grip. It's because of its steel and sharp. But when you go with wooden shoes on, on, on an icy track, you will slide everywhere. And it's actually like a slick. When a slick has no grip as it's cold, it's, it's like plastic. But it has to be getting softer and softer. And uh, the average temperature is between 80 and 90 degrees. What is the best temperature, the working temperature of a tire? But if it's zero degrees, it's like, like plastic. So you're skating off track immediately. The tire must be smooth, and smooth comes out from the temperature. Therefore, the temperature is so important for the race tire especially. And under these conditions here this weekend, it was really, really hard work for my engineers, together with the car engineers, to find the right car setup, also to make the right decisions, wet tires, slick tires, also combination for the front wheel driven car, front axle, slicks, rear axle, wet tire, to have some temperature inside at the rear axle especially. 
One of the priorities for Creventic is to offer racing for the most affordable price, and tyre warming does add to the costs. Raise the cost to buy the tyre warmers, but it lowers the cost on damage on the car. Um, let's imagine that you have cold tyres and you go on your first lap and it gets sleepy and you maybe hit somebody. You maybe also harm another car. So no, I think in the end it will be a benefit for everybody and maybe also the cost could go a little bit down with tyre warmers. But when new warm tyres have been fitted, the car still has to go to the fuel station and some of that warmth is lost before it gets back out on track. Yeah, the surface is cold, but bear in mind, the, the, the rim itself get, uh, keeps the heat. It's aluminum, it keeps the heat for a longer time. And yes, we calculated this is also what is the use of this tire heater. That's why we set a specific uh, temperature here. And in the refuel area, it costs us 2 minutes and 20 seconds for um, average. And yes, only the surface will drop down in temperature, but it gets heat very quickly. It's a little warmer than last night, and there's no rain. The pace of competition hasn't eased one bit, but there's still only one dry line, and if you go off it, you're in trouble. Uh, the car was in the gravel. Um, they were driving fast, but uh, uh, there is a dry line, and when you overtake somebody, there is uh, only the wet. So it was a little bit slippy, and they went off and uh, went in the gravel. And a lot of that gravel ended up on the track, when Christian Jepsen in the 155 Kawasaki branded Cupra shook his car clean. It's been an unpredictable race. The JW Bird Motorsport 221 started from the front row, having qualified second, but hasn't been able to capitalise, now in ninth position overall. The Accelerate Audi came into the pits half an hour ago. The British based team got the car back out, but not for long. Yes, uh, they did something, uh, they did something, then I went back out. And it was fine for again two, three laps, and then again it just, it just stopped accelerating hard, and then I had to come back in. I think right now they have concluded that it's a turbo problem, and they're going to try their very best. Uh, you know, they've been up all night uh, fixing. So they're going to try their very best and uh, try to see if we can get out before the race uh, finishes and do a couple of laps. In the pit, the 76 Synchro Honda. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's quite rare for these guys to do one so slow. They're pretty rapid at it. Say so our engine change an hour and a half earlier was pretty impressive. But um, we think it's a, a standard hose failure. We've had one failed at the beginning of the race, and then we had a change in engine. It seems like it's another hose, the same one. Or you know, it was a new one we put on. Um, we don't know why. We're unsure why that's all sort of happened because it's say a standard engine, standard parts. They don't have any issue with our road cars on that, so we're not sure what we've done to cause this. So uh, basically, we could change the hose in about the next two minutes, three minutes, but. We, you know, we're just going to damage an engine if we. So we're just going to say, well, we can't catch the cars in front now. So um, we'll just park it up, give it a nice clean, and you know, for its uh, swan song, couple of laps. The team, however, decided against that. They saw the venerable Civic Type RM, which earned Synchro last year's championship, ends its racing career here. With a healthy lead, the 303 Seat shows no sign of slowing down. Rick is in the car. Uh, he was pushing in the beginning, so we, 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 we repeatedly told him to slow down and still he was doing good lap times and telling us that he was slowing down. So we have to slow down more because we have to save the car and uh, now he's doing that, he's doing two 19s. Uh, so uh, we have to save the car and uh, not to take any risk. Rick Breikers sets the fastest lap time of the race, which spurred on the competition. The Blakemol and Seat pushing as hard as possible to get close to the race leader. Well. Yeah, I mean, it looks hard eh, if you see my face, but uh, well, it was I was pushing actually, I didn't want to lose time. So it's always hard, but uh, but in the same time we knew we had a big gap with number three. So also the main goal was keeping it on the track, but it was quite hard still. The Accelerate Audi has spent the last 100 minutes in the pits, but is able to join for the end of the race. LMS running third, but easing the pace of the car to get to the finishing flag. I mean, it was hard that we needed to save a lot of fuel, so you couldn't push, so you needed to try like a little bit, 70% or something like that, and that always makes it, you know, quite tough. I, I like driving fast all the time, so, but it was quite easy. Yeah, the, all the differences were so clear between the first three cars. The team manager had hoped for more. We did not win, uh, that's what we came from. Uh, so we had a couple of problems with, uh, with the brakes, uh, a lot of gravel beds. Um, so we came here for a win and P3 is, is, is good, but we came for a win, so not really happy. The 24 hours are up, the chequered flag falls, and it's a win for the 303 Seat. 
a unique race for the 24-hour Touring Car Endurance Series powered by Hankook. We have a very special race. We had rain, we had sunshine, we had fog, we had coat green, we had coat yellow, we had coat 60, we had even a coat red. And we also, of course, have Protos, GTs, we have the TCE Series. Yeah, what else? Everything we got, we have here in Silverstone. At the start of the race, Team LMS Racing didn't expect this result. They are left wanting more. We had a really rough start for the race and of the first stint. I would have taken the third position, I would have been very happy, but you know, after finishing third, you know, you always have a little bit more appetite. But yes, of course, we are satisfied. Team Blake and Morland not completely happy with their results. Yes and no. I mean, it's happy to be after 24 hours on the podium. But last year first, now second. Hmm. I have to come back now. Melvin did push the car in the last stint, but ultimately had to face the inevitable. The only thing the gap was too big with the first position, so uh, all we could do is uh, keep the second place. It was a joyful last stint for Rick Broikers. Uh, we had a quite a good gap, so it wasn't that hard, but we improved the best lap time, so uh, I put some effort in it and uh, it worked out. We're very happy to have won the race. Let's take a look at the standings after a fabulous event. Red Camel, Jordan.nl, Tim Blake and Mullen and LMS Racing deserving of the podium on this exciting weekend where the weather was a major factor. Two laps in between the top three, two Dutch and a Finnish flag over the podium. Just two cars, the 136 Motorsport Development Volkswagen and the number 30 Team Hyundai Denmark didn't finish the race. The Synchro 76 Honda was in the garage when the chequered flag dropped but they had completed enough laps to collect their championship points. In the classes, we celebrate the victory of the top three with the TCR class the same as the overall podium. In the A3 class also included the Cup 1 class cars this weekend and they took the top positions. Offer Racing powered by Bonk Motorsport 131 takes the top step of the podium flanked by the Duo Racing team who's 235 finished second and the PDM Motorsport team who's number 999 BMW Z3M finished third. As this weekend draws to a close, let's look forward to the next races. The next race will be in Italy, in Imola. That will be from the 24th till the 26th of May. But we have a race before that. We have the 24 Hours of Proto Series and the 24 Hours GT Series next month. That's from the 20th till 22nd of April. And that will be in Spain at the Circuit of Navarra. Fog. Rain, prototype cars and GTs during the first seven hours. Silverstone Grand Prix circuit in the dark, a red flag. Battles from 10.30 Saturday till 10.30 Sunday, the healthy amount of spins. But mainly, a huge amount of enjoyment in racing is what we'll take away. The 24-hour Touring Car Endurance Championship will continue at the end of May in Imola. Be there as a spectator, or better still, as a competitor. For more info, go to www.24htceseries.com.